Hi there, welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me once again. Today we're going to look at another one of the great Matchbox Purple Range Classic Vintage Kits and today it's the Hawker Tempest, uh, it's Tempest 5 I think. Um, however, um, you won't be surprised to learn that this is a kit that I think it's from 1974 so it's one of the sort of second tranche of the PK range, PK23, so it's the second uh, dozen if you like so that was a 74 model but you won't be too surprised to learn that I've actually made one of these so without further ado allow me to introduce you to the Hawker Tempest Ta -da! there we go <laughs> so this is what I prepared earlier as they say on Blue Peter um, it's quite a nice kit a little bit gappy though I, I just threw this together again this wasn't made as a proper scale model I just wanted to yeah I, I did paint it um, but I didn't want to put too much effort into it because I think that it loses its matchboxness if you do that. So I kind of wanted it to still retain that character. Nice model though. Um, it comes in two options actually. When you look back at the um, the box, you've got the option of the, the Mark, well they call it the Mark 6, I said the Mark 5. So it's the Mark 6, which is based at Nicosia in Cyprus, or the Mark 2, which is the one that's got the long-nosed... Uh, with the sort of radial uh, cowl that doesn't have the big intake underneath. So this is the um, Mark II, but looks like the Sea Fury. So this is where the Sea Fury came from, basically. Also a Hawker aircraft. On the side, as usual, we've got the image showing you what it will look like if you do not paint it, which uh, I was very tempted to, to leave it in that bare state but mine I think the one I built was actually different colours to this it wasn't as nice as it looks there so that's why I decided to paint it. On the reverse of the uh, other side thin end of the box you've got the Thunderbolt, Meshmit 262, Boeing and the Harrier um, maybe one or two of those I might see or have seen uh, and it'll say it's PK23 so without further ado why don't we take a look at the kit itself and get cracking so, um, just confirm it is a 74, it just says so on the back, and we'll open up this end, I think, and have a look inside. Let's see what we have. And, oops, interestingly, it's a rather odd colour. The other one I've got, I've got two copies of this, the other one I started actually filming, a confession to make here, I started filming the other one, I was into this chit chat, blah blah blah, and then I, I got halfway through and I tried to open the box and it was sealed. So I had to reshoot it from scratch, so there we go. Nice matchbox, typical, the usual M-shaped uh, matchbox stand, nothing surprising there. We've got a rather nice looking uh, canopy. This is where having the model in the background is not an advantage. So let's just let's hold it that way, it might be easier. There we go. So that's quite a nice canopy as you can see. And then we've got these rather odd uh, paint colours, and it's sort of like, dare I say, slightly rude, but you can't avoid the, the contrast. It's like diarrhea colour, isn't it? Let's be honest. <laughs> and this is just like an olive drab, which is a kind of strange thing, because it shows it as like a brown on the box, more like the brown plastic we saw on the, um, was it on the, the, uh, Harrier certainly and the Miss 110 that's sort of a brownie look but that's not what's inside anyway <coughs> let's have a look at the instructions um, strangely 74 issues seem to come out with this white not purple strangely so that's that's a departure from the norm um, I won't peel these off but we've got some lovely uh, decals here which look absolutely fine don't think you'd have a minute's trouble with any of them to be honest I'm sure they'll just come off and perform normally which is nice so let's have a look at these uh, instructions. A bit of blurb here saying, um, developed from the earlier Typhoon and entered service in 1944. Has a high top speed of 438 miles an hour and it destroyed 638 V1 flying bombs. Now in my cabinet I actually have it chasing a flying one, uh, a V1 flying bomb I should say. Um, and it destroyed those, those in just three months, 638 of them. It was the mainstay of the RAF's defences against these missiles. Of course they also used the, the Meteor toward the end of 44 as well. Continued in service for many years, sometime after the end of World War II. I think these were used in Korea. Uh, they still had them then. Anyway, on the back I've got the usual 
call outs for all your small parts. So we've got wheels, tyres, uh, the gear, which is all one with the back of the uh, the bay doors, <coughs> or the gear, bay, the, the gear, the gear covers, I should call it really. Uh, intake, exhaust, propeller, uh, the bays themselves, the undercarriage, then your wheel, seat, and your pilot. Uh, interior of the cockpit, and also also uh, the walking area on the inboard of the wing. Got a call outs on here and then we'll get into the meat of the actual instructions which shouldn't take long because it's only a purple. So we've got the pilot going in his seat then we've got the two halves coming together with in between then you're building up the front. Now this is where you've got an option in this kit you've got the option of the conventional big open mouthed Typhoon style Tempest look which is more common for the RAF or if you go for the Mark II you've got this more Sea Fury style you can actually build this into a Sea Fury I think um, and you can see the difference right here how they look different you've got the one with the big open mouth or one that looks more like a Zero <laughs> Mitsubishi Zero then your cockpit uh, canopy's going on the top um, I'm not sure what those two things are there are they extinguishers or what? I'm not familiar with that um, like a headrest so then you put it on whichever you feel is appropriate you put on that nose tailplane's going on building up your undercarriage with your legs and your uh, hydraulic support ram that uh, actuates it then you bring your wings together pop them on and there's no sort of weapons on this one it's purely a fighter so no underwing stores or bombs or anything like that just your undercarriage going in exhausts tail wheel and the tailwheel doors because it's got doors like a Mustang. Alternatively you just close everything up and uh, the wheels will not then be seen because it closes up completely. So there we go let's have a look at the two main sprues then. So we've got this olive green which is quite a dramatic uh, colour and it's got nice uh, some nice wheel uh, wheel well uh, the bay has got some good detail there I'd say it's pretty impressive that's quite nice and there's none of this nasty raised panel lines here either it all seems to have got it's all um, recess panel lining you've got your tail planes gear door covers um, so that's obviously this one here is for when a little focus trouble there sorry about that this is for when you are retracted and you want to cover it up completely here this one and this one is obviously when it's open uh, you've also got your Sabre Napier engine intake here um, that's that really uh, this is just a little piece of the leg for the undercarriage <coughs> this is the interesting sprue which has got all the variable bits on it so here we have the the optional frontages so you've got this very nice I'm going to zoom you in so you can see this in good detail so this is this optional Mark II uh, cowling around the engine or the more conventional Mark 6 here which has got the Typhoon style intake the big open mouth underneath you've got your spinner wheels and these are very nicely moulded I've got to say they're excellent wheels are very accurately done crisp almost Tamiya like then you've got your prop and you've got your pilot and he's got his seat here and then we have the fuselage and it's got this filleted style tail which was uh, very distinctive and that's the thing that makes it obvious between this aircraft and the Typhoon is really the tail it looks obviously different you can see it there if the camera will just focus for a second thank you <laughs> it's, no, it's slow today it must be, doesn't like cold temperatures I think um, but there we go. So that's uh, yeah, that's the kit. And uh, as I say, if you if you take a fancy to it, it's got a lovely box art again. Uh, typical, it's Roy Huxley signed by him on the front. Um, yeah, very nice kit actually. It goes together very well. The only thing I would say, from experience, and I don't know if you can see on this actual example, uh, it's a bit gappy uh, around. You can see it there, can't you? Around the wing, can you see? Yeah, it's just move it back a bit. There, can you see the gaps? Wing, the wing root, a bit gappy. So yeah, I could have filled it of course, but it's just it's the nature of the way they brought it together. 
not one of the better designs that Matchbox came up with as a wind join. That's quite nasty actually. Um, so I'm going to mark it down a bit for that, um, if I'm honest. But other than that, yeah, it's uh, it's quite a nice kit. Did I glue the prop? I actually did. I'm not sure why that was. It doesn't seem to want to move, that's for sure. But it's a nice model. Good representation. Apart from that bit underneath, you just don't want anybody to see that. I think that's the way that they thought about it. They thought, nobody can see underneath, we'll let it go. <laughs> anyway, there you go. So that's the Hawker Tempest. Nice kit, nice kit, but not one of the best. Not one of the best ones. I think about seven and a half out of ten is fair for that. Hope you'll give me more than seven and a half out of ten and give me a like. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you haven't already on the channel and ding the notification bell because that will get you notification of upcoming videos and more uh, reviews that are in the pipeline soon. And I just say thank you very much for joining me. Please stay safe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And in the meantime, thanks a lot. Bye for now.